Good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. Patrick's Cathedral here in New York, America's Parish Church. We are live streaming the Mass this morning. Uh, the celebrant of today's Mass is His Eminence, Timothy Cardinal Dolan. Uh, we will be praying for Kathleen Schmidt. And later on, we will have Masses offered for Bernie Siccarelli, Jesus Rodriguez Yap, Lawrence Bain, Giuseppe Candela, Teresa de Sanza, Frank and Marie Pedlo. We remember especially a couple who's going through a very difficult health crisis. A wife of many years is giving, donating her kidney to her, her husband this morning, uh, literally as we speak. So please remember them in your prayers. Don't forget St. Patrick's Cathedral when you are making your offerings and let us pray together and offer our mass and all of the, the sacrifices of the day together uh, to ask God's mercy on those who are suffering from the terrible coronavirus and those and God's strength and blessing to those who were, are working against it. Please join in singing our entrance hymn found in the St. Michael hymnal, number 627. Love divine, all loves excelling, number 627. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Welcome to morning Mass here at St. Patrick's Cathedral. In addition to those intentions Monsignor Ritchie mentioned, if you'd remember the repose of the souls of Cheryl Sinsenbrenner and Gloria Barrows, that we might offer this holy sacrifice of the Mass the more worthily. We acknowledge our sins, and we place them with humility and contrition into the burning furnace of love, compassion, and mercy of the most sacred heart of Jesus. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to life everlasting. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christe eleison, Kyrie eleison, Let us pray. Clothe us, Lord our God, with the virtues of the most sacred heart of your Son. Set us aflame with his love that, conform to his image and likeness, we may merit a share in eternal redemption through our Lord, Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. After the death of Naboth, the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, start down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, who rules in Samaria. He will be in the vineyard of Naboth, of which he has come to take possession. This is, this is what you are to tell him. The Lord says, after murdering, do you also take possession? 
For this the Lord says, in the place where the dogs lick, licked up the blood of Naboth, the dogs shall lick up your blood too. Ahab said to Elijah, have you found me out, my enemy? Yes, he answered. Because you have given yourself up to doing evil in the Lord's sight, I am bringing evil upon you. I will destroy you and will cut off every male in Ahab's line, whether slave or free man in Israel. I will make your house like that of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and like that of Baasha, son of Ahijah, because of how you have provoked me by leading Israel into sin. Against Jezebel, too, the Lord declared, the dogs shall devour Jezebel in the district of Jezreel. When one of Ahab's line dies in the city, dogs will devour him. When one of them dies in the field, the birds of the sky will devour him. Indeed, no one gave himself up to the doing of evil in the sight of the Lord, as did Ahab, urged on by his wife Jezebel. He became completely abominable by following idols, just as the Amorites had done, whom the Lord drove out before the children of Israel. When Ahab heard these words, he tore his garments, <coughs> put on sackcloth over his bare flesh. He fasted, slept in the sackcloth, and went about subdued. Then the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, have you seen that Ahab has humbled himself before me? Since he has humbled himself before me, I will not bring the evil in his time. I will bring the evil upon his house during the reign of his son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, be merciful O Lord, Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness and the greatness of your compassion. Wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt and of my sin cleanse me. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. For I acknowledge my offense. My sin is before me always. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Turn away your face from my sins and blot out all my guilt. Free me from blood guilt, O God, my saving God. Then my tongue shall revel in your justice. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to matthew glory to you lord jesus said to his disciples you have heard that it was said you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy but i say to you love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you that you may be children of your heavenly father for he makes his sun rise on the bad and the good and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers only, what is unusual about that? 
Do not the pagans do the same? So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. But I say to you, those are five very important words that we hear over and over again in the fifth chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, the renowned Sermon on the Mount. But I say unto you, um, it's a beautiful technique that Jesus has. First, he tells them what the world is saying, how the world wants us to act. Like today, he says, oh, you hear it said that uh, you, should, uh, you should love your friends but hate your enemies. But I say to you. In other words, don't listen to the uh, ways and the wisdom, the so-called wisdom of the world. Don't listen to that. Listen to what God's revealed. Listen to the Bible. Listen to the words of Jesus. But I say to you, boy, that was timely back then, wasn't it? At the Sermon on the Mount, and it's extraordinarily timely today. When we hear all day uh, the reflections, the so-called wisdom, the teaching, the ways, the acceptable things of the world, and we're tempted to listen to them, what the world, what culture says. We need to remember those five words. Uh-uh. But I say to you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink with humble spirit and contrite heart. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be Lord wash the Lord. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Father of mercy, who, because of the great love with which you loved us, with untold goodness gave us the heart of your only begotten Son, grant, we pray, that being per perfectly united with him, we may offer you worthy homage through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Heavenly Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for raised up high upon the cross, he gave himself up for us with a wonderful love and poured out blood and water from his pierced side, the wellspring of the church's sacraments, so that, won over to the joyful heart of the Savior, all might draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. And so with all the angels and saints of heaven, we praise you as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate this memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join in singing our communion hymn found in the St. Michael hymnal number 832, where charity and love prevail, number 832. who are unable to receive the sacrament of the body and blood of Christ, we make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. made partakers in your most blessed sacrament of charity, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that we may be conformed to Christ here on earth and then merit to be co-heirs of his glory in heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing our recessional hymn, number 791. There's a wideness in God's mercy, number 791. There's a wideness in God's mercy like the wideness of the sea. There's a kindness in his justice which is more than liberty. There is plentiful redemption in the blood that has been shed. There is joy. 